Alright, so this is going to be a follow-up video to my previous video about Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, there was a major point in there that I did not touch on. Um, I'm trying to make shorter videos and not make these lengthy studies. So with that being said, I'll get right to the point. I'm going to start out with prayer, and then we'll get right into it. Lord God, I ask that you would put your blessing on this video, and that you would allow all those watching this to open their hearts and their minds, Lord, and because thou hast endowed with them with reason please allow your word to not return unto you vain lord and have it accomplished that which you would have it to in jesus name amen so psalm 83 18 reads that men may know that thou whose name alone is jehovah art the most high over all the earth so when a jehovah's sickness looks at this what they see is that men may know that thou whose name only is jehovah that's how they read that and they say see that means that, G, that Jehovah's name is, you know, I'm sorry, that God's name is only Jehovah. Um, that's not what that's saying. What that's saying is that that is a name that only he has. It's saying that's only his name. Not that it's his only name. It's only his name. Not his only name. Okay. Um, so the title of this video is what is the name of God okay and the same exact wording here is used down in Psalm 148 13 it says let them praise the name of the Lord which is Jehovah that's what that is the yud heh vav -Hey, um, Yahweh or Jehovah the Bible says Jehovah so that's what I call him I don't want to call him Yahweh it sounds sissified anyway Jehovah just sounds like it's powerful um, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is excellent. Well, it says right up here, for his name alone is Jehovah. His name alone is excellent. So, you can't, you can't say that up here it means his name is only Jehovah, and down here it doesn't mean his name is only excellent. Okay. It's describing an attribute about God, but it's the exact same wording. It's just saying that only his name is Jehovah, okay? That's a name that only he has, Jay-Z, because Jay-Z likes to take the name Jehovah. Uh, but uh, Jay-Z is going to split hell open. That's a whole other video. It says, whose name alone is Jehovah, for his name alone is excellent, because it's only his name that's excellent. Your name's not excellent. My name isn't excellent. You know, my name's not that great, but his name is absolutely excellent, Okay. Uh, down here in Psalm 68 it says sing unto God sing praises to his name extol him that rideth upon the heavens by his name Jah I mean it clearly says his name is Jah alright his name is Jah Hova. okay that's his name but why is it called Jehovah's Witness why don't you call it, why, don't, why aren't you called Jah Witness or Jah's Witness you know, as a matter of fact, why aren't you called Excellence Witness? Okay, but no, clearly this is actually his name, and it says Ja. I mean, there's I don't think there there's more that I can really say about that. It, the scriptures are quite clear. So Isaiah 45 uh, says, "Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. So every knee will bow and every tongue shall swear to who? To God. This is quoted in the New Testament in Philippians chapter 2. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. So Jesus thought himself to be equal with God, and of course he did, because he is God. So why would he not think that? But it says, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. 
Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name, which is above every name. Okay, that would mean Jesus is above the name Jehovah. And given him a name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Jehovah, which means Lord. He's God, to the glory of God the Father. Okay, you need to confess that the word of God is Lord the way that God the Father is Lord. But it's the exact same wording. Not only does it say clearly that he's given him a name above every name, it says that unto Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. Up here it says, uh, God speaking, and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow. Well, that's quite clear what that's saying. Jesus Christ is the one talking in Isaiah 45. Acts chapter 4. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It is the name of Jesus Christ that saves us. There is none other name under heaven, not the name of God Almighty, not the name of Jehovah, not the name of Jehovah Jireh, not the name of Jehovah Nissi, not the name of Elohim, not the name of any other name other than the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, why is this so important? And like my last video where I showed without a doubt that Jesus Christ is God Almighty and that he is in fact not Michael the Archangel, um, down here in Isaiah 42 it says, I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. If Michael became Jesus and God has highly exalted Jesus, that would be a clear contradiction of this scripture where God the Lord is saying, my glory will I not give to another. But if God did give his glory to Michael the archangel, then he did in fact do that. Now, you can try to be like, well, you know, he exalted Jesus, but God the Father is still above Jesus. Well, yeah, of course he is. But it says that his name is above every name. So the name of Jesus is above the name of Jehovah. And that is giving him glory, which is the glory belonging only to God the Lord. So if he's giving that to anybody other than himself, God is going against what he said here. And God cannot go against himself so that wouldn't make any sense Zechariah chapter 12 it says talking about the end times and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced you cannot pierce a spirit Who's the one talking in Zechariah chapter 12? God is. Who is going to be able to pour out the spirit of grace and of supplications on anybody? Who's going to be able to do this? I didn't include the previous uh, verses, but, I mean, you're more than welcome to go and look at them. Obviously, of course, in the King James Bible. And you'll see that this is clearly God talking. But if God is only a spirit then you can't pierce a spirit. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him. Whoa. He went from talking in the first person to the third person in the exact same sentence. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son, and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Hmm. 
It's talking about the piercing of Jesus Christ. And God is saying that he's going to be pierced. Why? Because Jesus is God. John 14, it says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Well, Jesus just got done saying that you've already seen him, so why are you asking to see him? But look at what Jesus says. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not, hast thou not known me, Philip? So, Philip is inquiring about God the Father. And Jesus, the Son of God, is responding and saying, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Okay, he's proclaiming his deity. The Bible says that the Son is in the bosom of the Father, and that the Father is in the bosom of the Son, and that those three are one. You know, I don't want to get too deep on the Trinity here, uh, that's a whole other topic, and that's way deeper than this has to be. But this is this is another proof that Jesus is God. It says, "He hath he that hath seen me, has seen the Father." And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Because if you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Is what he's saying. So. Throughout time, what God has done is he's revealed his name, different names that he has. God doesn't just have one name. God has many names that he has throughout time, based on how he's interacting with humanity, has changed that name. Like I said in my previous video, the first scriptures that I opened up with was, was Hebrews 1. Uh, verse 1, it says, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto us, by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. Okay, God hasn't always talked to us the way that he talks to us now. Okay, we have the completed revelation of God. We have the completed word of God. Okay, so, but originally, uh, God was went by the name of God Almighty. But this is Exodus 6, so God is speaking to Moses, and he says, it says, And God spake unto Moses, and said unto him, I am the Lord. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Okay, first he says, I am the Lord. And then he says, you know, I didn't, they didn't really, they did not know that my name was Jehovah. They only knew that my name was God Almighty, but now you know another name of mine, which is Jehovah. And from Moses all the way until uh, Jesus, you know, that was the name that they worshipped God with, was Jehovah. All right, in Matthew 25, it says, And these shall go... Okay, well, I'm not... Let's jump in the gun here. So, this is very clear. Um, God went by the name of God Almighty until Exodus, and then he went by the name of Jehovah, and then until Matthew, he went by the name of Emmanuel, which means God with us, and he is God with us. He is Jesus Christ, um, and that is his name. But um, another doctrine, since I don't think that I'm going to make... an uh, many more videos on the Jehovah's Witness uh, cult, the Watchtower cult. I'm going to include in here uh, two other aspects uh, that they believe falsely, and that is that hell is not eternal. They don't believe that once you go to hell that it's forever. Um, and they don't believe that God is omnipresent, which is ridiculous, because there's a ton of scriptures on the omnipresence of God. But anyway, Matthew 25, this is Jesus speaking, and he says, and these shall go into everlasting punishment. Now, it says, but the righteous into life eternal. Now, that's ridiculous. If, you, if you're going to sit there and say that, there, that the punishment is not everlasting, you're a liar. Because this says it clear as day, there's no way around it. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. How long does that punishment last for? Uh, it lasts forever. Mark 9. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck, and he were cast into the sea. This is Jesus speaking, of course. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life. 
than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched, where their worm dieth not and their fire is not quenched. Number one, I just want to make a disclaimer. Jesus is not advocating for you to harm your body in any way, shape, or form. What he's stressing is how important it is, how absolutely terrible hell is, so that you need to do everything that you can in your power to get out of there. Once you're there, you're there forever. Okay? It says everlasting punishment. There is no purgatory. There is no, hey, I'm just going to go and burn for my vine, uh, uh, medial sins or vin, uh, venereal sins. I don't know. Not venereal. But um, I don't know. I Whatever the Catholics, there's two different ones. Um, look, you don't have to burn for your sins a little bit. Jesus Christ, the Bible says in Acts chapter 2, it says, Moreover, my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Because Jesus Christ is the one that went to hell for three days and three nights, just as Jonas was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, and then God raised him from the dead. But when it says, If thy foot offend thee, cut it off, he's just saying, Look, do whatever you have to do to not go to hell, because if you lose a foot... If you lose a hand, if you lose your eye, it doesn't matter because that's nothing compared to even a, the second you enter hell. You spend two seconds in hell, you may as well just sit there and just use a saw and cut off all your arms because it's nowhere near as bad as what hell is like. And um, praise God, we don't have to cut off our arms. We don't have to cut off our hands or our feet because all we have to do is believe. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. But notice here, it says, then, then having two feet to be cast into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. See, that fire is not going to be quenched. It's not going to be satiated. It's not going to cease to burn. And it says, where their worm dieth not. There's undying worms that are going to go in and out of your body. They're going to go in and out of your eye sockets, in and out of your ears, in and out of your flesh. Just worms that don't die. Fire that is not quenched. And he says this three times. Jesus Christ preached on hell three times more than he preached on heaven. Hell is important. Nobody in the Bible preached on hell as much as Jesus did. Oh, Jesus is so loving. Oh, yeah, amen. G the Bible says God is love. Jesus is love, which is why he's trying to warn you that hell is an eternal place of absolute torment and punishment and if you want to escape, you must believe that God Almighty came to this earth and paid the penalty for you that you and I rightfully deserve. But if you deny what he's done, the Bible says in 1 John 5, you've made him a liar because you believe not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that he hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. Okay. And Isaiah 7, 14, it says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive, that's Mary, and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Well, that's weird. His name is Jesus, not Emmanuel. Is that a contradiction? Well, no, the Bible says his name is excellent. I mean, the Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. His name isn't Wonderful you know, that's not his actual, his name is Jesus, but G, the name of Jesus is wonderful. That's a wonderful name. That Jesus, his name shall be called Counselor. Jesus, which is his name, is a counselor. You know, those are attributes of him. And it says in Matthew one twenty three, it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child. Now, I don't want to go off on a rabbit trail, but right here it says, shall conceive. Down here it says, with child. So, the moment you conceive, God says, you're with a child. The moment that your egg is fertilized, that's a baby. I don't care if you think it's a bag of cells or not. God says that's a child. It says, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. See, God came down from heaven to do what you and I could not do, friend, and that is to be the perfect man. He is the perfect man. And only God can do such a thing. Not some angel, not some half-god, demi-god, no. Only God omnipotent, the almighty creator of heaven and earth, can do such an amazing thing. It says in Psalm 89, this is God talking, I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. Now, 
Uh, don't want to go off on this either, but uh, many times in the Bible, uh, it says that David was a representation of Jesus Christ. Um, in fact, I don't think that you can find anybody in the Bible uh, that is more like Jesus than David was. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. Um, but I'll prove to you that it's not talking about literally David. It says, With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Uh, number one, the fact that Psalms was written by David, and um, I'm not sure... Do not quote me on this. Actually, give me a second here. Let me open my physical Bible that I have right here. So I'm not sure if David is the one that wrote Psalm 89. He did not. Mashil of Ethan, the Ezraite. So the first psalmist was David. So this was written after David died. This is not talking about the literal David. It says, The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. In the name of Jehovah shall the name of Jesus be exalted. Why? Because he's called the Lord Jesus. Which means Jehovah Jesus. That's his name. I will set his hand also in the sea, and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. That's why I included verse 27, because that alone proves that this is not talking about David. That is, that is something that the New Testament says about Jesus constantly. That he is the firstborn from the dead. That he is the firstborn of God's creation. That he is the firstborn, the firstborn, the firstborn. Uh, when she had brought forth her firstborn son. Okay. Jesus Christ is the firstborn. And he is the one that's higher than the kings of the earth. Okay. So the name of God was God Almighty up until um, from, you know, Adam all the way through Job even, all the way up until Moses. And then after Moses, all the way through Zechariah and to Malachi, up until the book of Matthew chapter 1, God revealed his name at that time to be Jesus Christ, and that that is the name above every name right now. The Bible says there is none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. The last point I want to make is the omnipresence of God, because I live in San Antonio, and I was down at the Alamo a couple months ago, and I was trying to debate with these um, Jehovah's Witnesses, trying to get them saved. And not only do they not believe in heaven, which is ridiculous, because the Bible says that God lives in heaven, and it says um, the spirit of the man that goeth upward, uh, which would be heaven, um, they don't believe that God is everywhere. They don't believe in the omnipresence or the all presence of God, which is insanity. Um, it says in Psalm 139, starting in verse 7, Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Where, where can I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? That's a good question. If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. A lot of people believe, though, hell is separation from God. No, it's not. The Bible says they're going to be, uh, they're going to be burned with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord. His presence in hell is where the destruction is coming from. It says, "If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me." and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. You cannot flee from God's presence. Proverbs 15.3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place. What does every mean? What does place mean? Beholding the evil and the good. Jeremiah 23 says, Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? Yes, Lord, you most certainly do fill heaven and earth. 
you fill heaven and earth, and there is no place where I can go where I can flee from thy presence and from thy spirit, because thou art everywhere, and your eyes are in where? Where are his eyes? Oh, the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Okay. It's that simple. Yea, let God be true, and every man a liar. Thy word is truth, and people need to stop listening to men. It doesn't matter if it's your family members. It doesn't matter if it's your best friend. It doesn't matter who it is. The, the truth of this world lies only in the word of God. Because the word of God is a timeless... Oh, that's, a, that's an archaic book. No, it's not. The Bible claims to be outside of time. The Bible claims to be the creator. That's what first John, that's what John 1, verse uh, 1 through 3 says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him. By who? By the Word of God. So, that's that. If you have any questions or anything, let me know. Please give me a thumbs up, and if you liked the video... Um, give me a comment and please share this with all your Jehovah's Witnesses friends or even just share it with somebody who uh, just wants to watch the video. But I'm going to just end with a quick prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the clear truths that you have in your word, Lord. And please allow this video to go and to reach as many as you would have it to reach, Lord. And I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.